Hello students, welcome to EPG Partsala. I am Sunil Kumar from IIT Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about a module on forces. Uh, the forces can be the fundamental forces and forces which are not fundamental but can be derived from the fundamental forces. So the aim of this module is basically to learn not about the forces or the types of forces but how to quantify them what is the basic definition of a force that we want to learn in this module the forces as i said in the beginning can be fundamental or can be derived from the fundamental forces <coughs> the fundamental forces are electric force magnetic force gravitational force and the nuclear forces then the fundamental forces can be defined or can be explained using unified theories. For example, the electric and magnetic forces have been unified in electromagnetic theory by Maxwell. Can be described, these forces can be described using a set of coupled equations, a single electromagnetic field, which actually is enough to explain the electric or magnetic forces. Similarly, efforts are going on to unify more than just these two forces. They want to include scientists worldwide are working very hard to basically come out with a grand unified theory which has not only the electromagnetic force but the gravitational force and the nuclear force is included in a single set or set of coupled equations that is enough to explain any force that exists in nature and then there are various other types of forces so what is the basic definition of a force the general definition of force is an interaction between objects that causes a change in the state of motion. State of motion means if a, if a body or object is sitting at rest, then it would like to just sit at rest or if it is in a moving state, it would like just keep that moving state unless or until there is a force applied. So the basic definition of force is that it when it applies to object or a body it changes the state of the body okay secondly when you define a force you have to be aware of the scale involved the scale involved means that a scale can come from the size of the particle or the body or the distance between bodies where you are actually trying to calculate the force the time is the time scale or the mass scale you have to be aware of the scales involved then i mean when you are aware of these scales then immediately it is obvious that the the forces which are acting at the macroscopic level meaning that between atoms or between nuclei or between electrons in a atom in an atom okay so those forces are completely different from the forces which are active at uh, uh, planetary scale okay or between uh, planetary objects like earth and moon the force act active between earth and moon has a completely different scale than the force acting between uh, uh, macroscopic objects so there are four fundamental forces in nature the electromagnetic force already you have unified the electric and magnetic force in that the weak force the strong force and the gravitational force so these four forces are the fundamental forces and then you have other than these forces various other kinds of forces which you actually see in your daily life fundamental forces in nature so there are four fundamental forces in nature as they are described here through pictorial description the first one is electromagnetic force which is actually between the charged particles or charged bodies the second one is gravitational force which is between massy particles third one is a strong nuclear force which is operational inside the nucleus and the fourth one is weak force again which is operational between elementary particles like nucleons or subnucleons but it works uh, at ranges or at scales at length scales which are much larger than the length scales for strong forces
Newton's force in Newtonian or classical mechanics. So the famous F equal to MA relation for the force F acting on a particle with mass M creating an acceleration A was given by Newton. So this was second equation, second law of motion given by Newton. If there are multiple forces acting on an object, then the resultant force F is nothing but the net sum, the net vector sum of all the forces acting on the object. For example, in this picture here, two bodies are there with masses M and 2M and there is a force F acting in the, trying to pull the body in the forward direction, the two bodies in the forward direction. Other than this forward force, there are two other forces F1 and F2 which are acting on the body against each other. So in this example, if you are asked to calculate the acceleration produced in the motion of the two bodies, then the answer would be the acceleration produced in that body which has a smaller mass which be higher because you are applying the same amount of force on the two bodies and the other forces which are acting against each other are balancing them. Coulomb's force. Electrical force between two charged particles is called Coulomb's force if the charges on the two particles are Q1 and Q2 and they are separated by a distance r then mathematically the force is given by F equals a constant k times q1 into q2 divided by r square. The Coulomb's force is attractive for opposite charges and repulsive for same type of charges. For example, in this figure, you have three particles, two particles are negatively charged and the third particle is positively charged. So the force is between two negatively charged particles is repulsive. On the other hand, the force is between the positive and the negative charged particles is attractive and hence negative. Magnetic force. Magnetic force is attraction or repulsion that arises between electrical charged particles because of their motion. Electrical current is due to flow of charged particles that we know. Magnetic force on a charged particle in a magnetic field B is proportional to the charge the quantity of the charge itself on the particle, the velocity of the particle and the magnetic field in that region. So if the direction of the magnetic field and the velocity of the particle are not the same, then mathematically the expression for the force or the magnetic force acting on the particle is given as F equals Q times V times B times sin theta, where theta is the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the velocity of the particle. So you have, let's say in a space, magnetic field generated by a magnet that you can actually build by using some magnetic material wrapped with the uh, current flowing wire. So if you bring in an iron rod close to the magnet, because there is magnetic field around that magnet, so you feel that magnetic force while bringing the iron rod close or if the iron rod was close by, pulling it away from that region while doing so also, you experience that magnetic force. Gravitational force. So gravitational force is always attractive force between two objects of let's say masses m1 and m2 separated by a distance r. The gravitational force will be proportional to the two masses and anti-proportional to or inversely proportional to r square. Popular example is earth you throw a body up in the air because of the gravitational pull of the earth the ball comes back returns to the ground. So there the gravitational pull acting on the body will be equal to a constant times the mass of the earth the mass of the ball in this example divided by how far you can throw the body in the air. Due to gravity or the gravitational acceleration g equals 9.8 meter per second square, every body on earth has got a weight which is equal to m times g. This is the gravitational force which we commonly know as the weight 
of bodies on earth. Strong forces are the forces which are operational between the subnuclear particles inside a nucleus. The effective distance at which the strong forces are active is of the order of femtometer, which is one billionth of a micron. And this force is about 10 to the power 38 times stronger than the gravitational force between unit mass objects. The picture here depicts a nucleus of an atom which has protons which are positively charged and neutrons which are neutral. Because the protons have positive charge, obviously they have this electric force acting between them. But the neutrons also interact with the protons and the and this interaction actually is because of these strong forces and this is strong force between various neutrons and protons or neutrons and neutrons is responsible for the binding of the nucleus. Weak forces. Weak forces are operational between elementary particles such as quarks, leptons and so on. The weak forces play an important role in nuclear beta decay for example and other beta decay processes. The weak forces mediate the decay of neutron into three particles, one electron, one proton and one neutron, neutrino. These forces are weaker than the strong forces and the electromagnetic forces, but stronger than the gravitational force. Electromagnetic forces is between two charged particles which create both electric and magnetic fields and these forces are governed by the Maxwell's equations. For example, electrons and nucleus of an atom are always experiencing this force. Why? Because the electrons are always in motion and the nuclei also are always in motion inside a body or a molecule or bigger particle. Because of their motion, they always generate these electric and magnetic fields around them, which is experienced by the other particles. For example, nuclei generate electric and magnetic forces magnetic fields which the electrons experience and the electrons also produce electric and magnetic fields which the nuclei experience and so on. For a charged particle moving with velocity v in the electric and magnetic field created by other charges experiences electromagnetic force which is mathematically given as f equals charge times e plus v into b. Light of electro electromagnetic waves have both the electric and magnetic force fields associated with it. Now the question comes, once you have learned about the forces, how do you quantify them? When you are, when you want to quantify them, in what units? What are those units? So, the popular units uh, of system in which you can quantify forces are the international system of units, where the force is quantified in terms of newtons. So, newton is the unit of force in SI units. So, one newton of force is basically the force that is required to accelerate a one kilogram mass at a rate of one meter per second square. So, that is the unit. So, one unit, one newton is the unit of the force that is actually needed to accelerate a one kilogram mass at a rate of 1 meter per second square. Then you can quantify again the forces in another unit of system that is called MKS system. What is MKS? Meter kilogram second system of units. So here 1 Newton force is referred as 1 kilogram meter per second square. Okay. So then the third one where which is actually used to uh, quantify forces is the CGS system of units. So here C stands for centimeter, G stands for gram and S stands for second. So in CGS system of units, force, the unit of force is dyne. One dyne is one gram centimeter per second square. So a newton, if you want to express one newton in terms of dynes, then one newton is basically 100,000 dynes. So these are the units in which forces are expressed and these are the popular system of units which are actually used everywhere in the world to express forces, to quantify forces. As we just discussed, grand unification theory is an effort 
to unify all the four fundamental forces or interactions in nature here in this graph in this picture various fundamental interactions are given as a function of temperature in various regions in that temperature scale these interactions are operational for example below 10 to the power 15 k we have all the four fundamental interactions beyond 10 to the power 15 k we have the gravitational interaction and a unified force field because of the strong electromagnetic and the weak force fields so this theory tries to reach to a point which will ultimately have a super force kind of thing that will be enough to explain all these four fundamental force fields but in different temperature scales so at you will find a temperature scale at which all the four fundamental force fields can be generated from the super force field so this is the point where the research is currently heading to find an answer or to find that super force field kind of entity the way we learn about maxwell's electromagnetic theory meaning that maxwell's theory unifies the electric and magnetic fields magnetic forces in set of coupled equations and the electron electromagnetic force actually is uh, enough to explain the electric and magnetic forces similarly efforts are going on to unify more than these two forces meaning that you have electric force magnetic force the gravitational force and the nuclear forces among the four fundamental forces so you would like to have a theory which actually has all these forces written down in terms of a single force that actually under different situations can explain all these four fundamental forces that theory which tries to unify all these forces fundamental forces is called grand unification theory and if this theory in which the efforts are still you know not complete they are going on and people worldwide are the scientists worldwide are trying to work on this theory to come out with the final theory if this theory is successful it will be called the complete theory or the theory of everything so other than the four fundamental forces we have various other types of forces in our daily life that we experience they can be van der waals force that is operational between molecules the biological molecules for example between proteins there can be a normal force that you experience due to contact you are standing on the floor so the floor is exerting a force on you that balances your gravitational force that is called normal force then there is frictional force meaning that you are driving your car on the road and you apply your brakes to stop the car so brakes are working on the wheels but the contact between the wheels and the road the surface of the road there is a frictional force which is opposite to the direction of motion direction of motion of your car that frictional force depends on the surface and the wheels the property of these two that actually helps in stopping the car so then there can be tension force what is a tension force you basically pull a rope you take a rope you pull it okay so in the rope there is a some kind of force uh, generated that tries to bring the rope back to its normal condition normal length that is called tension force then you might have come across of a spring force or i'm sure everybody has seen uh, experienced this or learned about this a spring force what is spring force you have a spring you compress or uh, pull it you get a restoring force that is called a spring force then resisting force or drag force okay so some body is falling uh, from let's say sky okay so it is falling under gravity but it experiences when you you know you might have experienced this when you 
try to jump from uh, from from some height into a river or pond you might have experienced this assisting force you know so when you are flowing inside a fluid that time also you might have experienced this so this is like drag force another for form of a force then there are centripetal and centrifugal force which are acting on particles or bodies when they are moving in a circle van der waals force arises from all intermolecular interactions that act between electrically neutral molecules for example in this image here you have a molecule made of three atoms overall the molecule is charge neutral but because of the motion various kinds of motion in the molecule there is always rearrangement of the charges on the atoms so interaction between various parts of a single molecule or between different molecules through the temporary charge dipoles and induced dipoles that get formed due to the motion of the charge rearrangements this interaction is basically the van der waals interaction normal force due to contact so take an example of a body which is on a fixed support so in this picture there are four cases described in the first one the body is sitting is still on the on the floor of the on the floor in the second one it is acted upon by a force f at an angle theta from the from the horizontal direction in the third case the body is pulled with a force f in the direction theta in the fourth case the body is on an inclined plane and the angle of inclination is theta if the weight of the body is m into g the normal force in all the four cases which is perpendicular to the surface is always n so when in the first case the body is sitting is still on the ground the normal force is equal to the weight of the body in the second case when the body is acted upon by a force f at an angle theta there is a component of the force in the same direction where n is acting these two components have to balance the weight of the body and so on frictional force so frictional force acts between an object which is moving with certain velocity or certain speed and the ground on which it is moving for example a car is moving forward due to the thrust created by the engine in that example the frictional force is opposite to the direction of the motion of the car and between the ground and the wheels of the car a spring force so a spring force is exerted by a compressed or stressed spring upon any object that is attached to it this example here shows a spring which is fixed at one end and from the other end it is pulled with a force f the original length of the spring was l and because of the pulling the increase in the length of the spring is dl so the spring force developed because of the pulling is opposite to the pulling force and secondly it is the spring constant k times the change in the spring length dl so k is the property of the spring or the material with which which is used to make the spring tension force when ropes strings cables or wires are fixed at one end and pulled tight at the other end you experience this force another example let's say two kids are pulling a rope in a positive direction with forces f1 and f2 as shown pictorially here the tension developed in the spring in the rope first of all is opposite to the applied force for applied force f1 the tension developed in the spring is t which is away from that force similarly for f2 the tension developed is away from that kid so tension force created in the rope is always in the opposite direction of the applied force and if it is pulled from both the ends the tension generated in the rope is opposite and same if the two forces are unequal because the tension force is balanced in the rope it gets pulled towards that end or that side where the force is 
larger than the other. Drag force such as the force due to air resistance. It always opposes the motion of the object and quantitatively it depends on the density of the fluid around the moving object. For example here a person with a parachute is landing down. So it is landing down because of its weight towards the ground and the air resistance because of the drag force tries to keep it held. If the force because of gravity and the drag force balance each other meaning there is no net force towards the ground the person will simply float in the air. So how much the drag force will be generated that depends on the area which is in contact with the air or fluid. Centrifugal force. Let's assume that there is a particle which is moving along the circumference of a circle. The particle experiences a force which is acting away from the center in a direction going away from the center. So if the particle is not held with some external force, it will simply fall off because of this force. And this force is basically dependent on the speed of the particle. Higher the speed, higher would be the force, higher would be the fall of force meaning that you need higher force to help the particle on the circumference of the circle. Mathematically, this force is given as Fc equals mv square by r, where r is the radius of the circle, m is the, particle, uh, the mass of the particle and v is the speed or velocity with which the particle is moving. This force which is acted away from the center of the circle is called the centrifugal force. Likewise, you have centripetal force. The difference between centrifugal and centripetal force is that the centrifugal force is always directed towards the center of the circle. So here also you have a particle with mass m and velocity v moving in a circle of radius r. Obviously, the particle experiences the centrifugal force which is acted away from the center and the force that keeps the object moving with uniform speed along the cir circular path is called centripetal force which has to be generated by some source. For example, it can come from the gravitational pull or it can come from the coulomb force between two charged particles. Again mathematically it is given by Fc equals mass times velocity square divided by the radius of the circle. Let's see some practice problems to clarify our understanding. So in the first one the question is the strength of weak force is larger than hello the options are electromagnetic forces, strong forces, Van der Waals forces or gravitational force. What will be the correct answer? Second question is about frictional force between the wheels of your car and the surface of the road. So this frictional force remains same on all days, decreases during rains or increases during rains. Which of the three is true? Third problem is about the force between two identical charges separated by one centimeter. Let's say the force is 90 Newton. So what is the magnitude of the two charges? The solutions are given here which are simply coming from the understanding so far we have obtained. To summarize this module, so starting from the basic definition of force and system of units that are used for quantification, in this module we try to get familiarized with most of the types of forces that exist in nature. There are only four fundamental forces in nature and they are electromagnetic force, the gravitational force, the strong and the weak forces. So electromagnetic theory by Maxwell actually tried 
unifies the electric and magnetic forces force fields through one set of coupled equations and similar effect a uh, similar efforts actually uh, are going on to unify more than two forces more than two fundamental forces they want to include scientists worldwide want to include the gravitational and the nuclear forces um, along with the electromagnetic force to basically come out with a uh, combined or uh, complex force field that can explain uh, all these fundamental forces. So as I said the grand unification theory is currently the hot topic of research in physics where many scientists are working toward formulating a theory that combines electromagnetic their strong and the weak forces along with the gravitational force fields to create a complete theory or the theory of everything. So other than these fundamental forces the various other types of forces that we see in our everyday life we discuss some of them here uh, some of these forces are the friction force the centripetal force the centrifugal force the tension force the spring force etc thank you